Greetings, I'm Shad, and it's time to talk about the heater shield. First things we're going to talk about is uh, how people or the world kind of perceive or look at the heater shield, you know, um, how well is it known and uh, because it is, it's a well-known shield, okay, it's a, it's a popular one and why is that? So talk about the why and also the name. As with all my videos, I like to kind of kick things off um, uh, to look at the, the name of either the shield weapon or whatever uh, to see, you know, how that came about because heater shield is clearly not a historical term, but sometimes I wonder, but anyway, people generally agree that the heater shield came about from uh, museum curators or historians when they looked at the shield they said well gee this looks so much like the bottom of a heating iron we just call them irons nowadays but a heating iron if you go back in days the, the old style irons right were basically clumps of iron that's iron iron right it was a clump of iron with a flat bottom and a handle and you would chuck it on your stove and the bottom would heat up and that's how you would iron your clothes and so it was called a heating iron specifically and that's how we get the name heater shield is that what it was called in history of course not the heater shield is a clear and obvious evolution from the kite shield and of course the kite shield wasn't called a kite shield in history either most likely they just called them shields in their own language shield and if they did need to identify it there are some you know words thrown about that I've researched and found out for the kite shield either a teardrop shield or indeed a pear shield or the Norman pear because it's shaped like a pear or an upside down pear so in any case these are more descriptive terms most likely they were just called shields in their original language and that's for the case for the heater shield as well now the heater shield seems to be the most recognizable and iconic and well-known shield out of all the kind of classical shield types and look there's a lot of shield types out there I'm just kind of focusing on the you know the three slash three and a half big well-known ones so we've looked at the Skjolder Viking shield which is the round shield we looked at the kite shield now we're looking at the heater shield I say the 0.5 part because the buckler is very well known though very misunderstood as well so why is the heater shield so well known well it's clear it's because it's association with the knight indeed when so when people envision the knight with the sword and shield going into battle the heater shield is the type of shield that they picture um, uh, the knight to carry. Now, that's not an incorrect thing. Eh? In fact, if you were to look at the knight clad in his glorious armor, indeed the heater shield would be the shield he would carry if he was to carry a shield. He doesn't need to. But generally, speaking in a general sense, the heater shield is the shield that one would pick when in heavy armor. So that concept is not incorrect, though there is a lot of context you need to understand. You see, many people, I find, when I look out, you know, uh, uh, on the internet and uh, doing my research and other things like that, um, especially with uh, when you look at pop culture, it seems that the heater shield is the most popular shield that you will find out there. And when people think that they, oh, they want to use a sword and shield, this shield is the one that generally gets picked or uh, portrayed in movies, pop culture, and other things like that, uh, more often than other shields. And so I think I might be correct in saying that the heater shield is probably the most popular shield out there in regards to pop culture movies and movies uh, and things like that. And I feel it's so popular, again, because of its association with the knight. This is the classic knight shield. And indeed, this type of shield is used in many other um, uh, portrayals as well. For instance, in coats of arms, it is the heater shield profile that is used that will bear either the crest. Now, it's interesting. Um, in coats of arms, uh, there, there's official ways and then there's kind of, you know, other ways as well. But you would generally have like a helmet above the shield and then the crest above the helmet. But if you more simplified kind of ones, you sometimes the crest is just flat on the shield as well. Especially for knights going into battle when they didn't want to attack someone who was their friend. And so there had to be a way uh, to identify who was friend and foe. Now it's funny, there is a bit of give and take there because it also means the enemy can identify friend and foe and there's even a story about a knight who did not carry any um, heraldry to identify who he was. Is it the Battle of Ivanhoe or the story of... Uh, oh, clearly I'm not a big historian but um, uh, 
I know there's a, a good story of a knight who went into battle and he didn't carry any um, uh, identify insignia with him, and so no one knew who he fought for, of course. They kind of figured it out when he started attacking one side, but they didn't know who he was, and it turned out he was actually the King of England. Was it Ivanhoe? I can't remember. So, heraldry plays an important part on the battlefield, and they would generally display their crest to identify who they were, or even just their colours, because, um, I picked this because it's a very iconic kind of thing, but this is this colour configuration is by far not the only one. They had huge different colour configurations, and so there were many different ways, depending on culture, period, and um, things like that, how a knight would be identified. But the shield played a big important part of that, and then it also carried over for when you would display your coat of arms, and coat of arms functioned as... Uh, basically the medieval equivalent of the modern day signature and indeed they are still used like you can register design a coat of arms and register it and use it to mark yourself on official documents in the same way that you would sign your name. Now the actual name of the shield in a coat of arms it is identified as the Escutin or the Escutin. I'm not good with the pronunciation. And so in a proper big coat of arms where you have the helmet, crest, shield bearers and stuff like that, the crest wouldn't generally be on the shield itself, but what you'll generally find is either there'll be a field of colours with certain kind of symbols that are they're called charges that represent other things about the person, other things like that. Have a look at coat of arms if you're interested in. So when you see the heater shield in all these other you know, realms being used for coat of arms and other things like that, you can kind of understand why and how the heater shield has become so well known and also why it is so popular. But does that make it better than other shields? Is it the best shield? No. Well, if you've watched my videos, you know which shield I think is the best. I think the kite shield is by far the best shield you can get out there. But of course, there has to be something that the heater shield is providing over other shields which necessitated its development. Why, you know, why did it come about? So with these things now understood, the reasons why the heater shield is so popular and its name, we will be ready to go into the next video. So please go and watch the next video, which we'll be looking at how the heater shield evolved and what function it is supposed to fulfill. So thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you in the next.